Each of these camera lenses belong to a photographer with their own interests in taking pictures of people, places, or things. While I don't personally know each photographer I make videos about, this camera lens belonged to my grandfather, a photographer who enjoyed documenting Japan's nature. So I brought the 50-year-old lens to Japan to capture images in the spirit of the original owner, J.A. If you want to watch a version of this video without voiceover commentary, there will be a link in the description. First, I traveled to Hirosaki in northern Japan. The main reason for going this far north was due to the timing of a particular bloom. There is a relatively brief part of the year when this takes place, and the north is where it happens last. Sakura, Japanese cherry blossom, is the national flower and tree of Japan. They bloom only from late March to early April. For these first shots, I tried to shoot at a wide aperture to separate the flowers from the background scenery. After World War II, my grandfather moved from the U.S. to Japan. It was during this time that he fell in love with the nature, architecture, and culture of the country. There will be a video for each topic. This video will cover the nature of Japan captured with J.A.'s lens. These tulips are a bit of a teaser for later in the video when I visit an annual tulip fair. On the way to the next destination, I found a butterfly on a sign with matching colors. Next, I headed to an island that was supposedly filled with deer. I tried to grab some shots on the ferry to the island. Some friendly deer were, in fact, found on the island. There was one deer highlighted from a break in the tree leaves. The main challenge with camera lenses this old is everything is manual, so wildlife can be particularly difficult to focus on if they're moving. Also, this lens is 50 millimeters, so it's not a great length for getting close to wild animals. Fortunately, these deer were very calm and did not move much. After the deer, I went on a hike to the tallest peak on the island. Thank you for watching this far. As mentioned earlier, the lens this video is based around belonged to my grandfather. Using his camera lens in the same places and ways that he did was a way for me to try to connect with him after he passed away. I enjoyed the process so much that I collected other photographers' vintage camera lenses and worked with their surviving family members to do something similar for each one. I have many videos in different stages of completion or planning, and I'm excited to continue with other photographers' lenses. In this moment, I understood my grandfather's fondness for Japanese landscapes. It was absolutely beautiful at the top. Due to this effect called atmospheric distortion, things in the distance weren't very clear or crisp. However, the fogginess ended up creating a nice separation of elements in the frame. Next, I traveled to Tanami for the annual tulip fair. Before the fair, I explored around the area at sunrise. Do you have a favorite image from this video? Comment the timestamp, I would be grateful to know. The original owner of this lens was enamored with the nature in Japan. An annual tulip festival felt like an appropriate way to carry on in that same spirit. For flower pictures, my default angle is a bug's perspective. To me, it makes the flowers look like big alien trees.
For the next shots, I tried to fill the foreground with flower bits to hopefully make the frame more interesting. While looking for a restaurant, I found tulips that had a tiring day. I also had a tiring day. I understand you, tulips. If you ever wondered what the blurry balls of light in images are called, many people call the effect bokeh. This lens has an interesting hexagon bokeh, and I was able to showcase it here. I have so many lenses and photographer stories queued up, I love working on this project. Here are some videos about other photographers' vintage lenses. Thank you for watching.